Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about customer segmentation using Tableau. One of the common analyses we often need to perform is to segment or group customers in meaningful ways and target people in different segments with accurate messaging and offers, which are most likely going to appeal to them. In one of my previous videos, I walk through how you can perform the quadrant analysis to segment the customers based on two most important dimensions to the business, such as order value and order frequency. You can check this video using the link above. I will also put the link to this video in the description box below. Sometimes you will find that your customers can have diverse experiences. This means you may want to use different metrics to capture your customers' activities. You want to leverage all these metrics to segment your customer base. A simple 2x2 two two quadrant chart will not really meet this type of needs. In this situation, you may want to consider leveraging more advanced clustering analysis to segment your customers. In Tableau, there is a built-in analytics capability to perform the segmentation analysis. Tableau uses the k-means clustering method, and it is a centroid approach. This type of model will divide the dataset into k segments with a centroid in each segment. The centroid is the mean of all the points in the given segment. What k-means clustering actually does is that it will place the centroid in each segment so that it can minimize the total distances between different centroids and points in the segments. Now let's go ahead to use a real example to see how we can leverage this Tableau building capability to segment the customers. In this example, I will continue to use the Superstore dataset. Before I go into the analysis, I want to talk a little bit about the metrics I want to use to segment the customers. The first metric is called order recency. Order recency captures how recently customers make their purchases. The second metric is called order frequency, which shows how often customers buy from the company's goods or services. The third metric is order value, which reflects how much customers spend. And the last metric is order quantity, which captures the total volume of their purchases. Now go to the analysis menu bar on the top and uncheck aggregate measures. I would like to make a scatter plot using order value and order recency. Drag and drop order value to columns and order recency to rows. You will see a scatter plot where each circle represents a customer and the items he or she purchased during a given time period. Go to the Analytics pane. Under the Model section, drag and drop cluster to the scatter plot. You will see a pop-up window, which you can change the number of variables you would like to use to segment the customers and or change the number of clusters you would like to show. In this case, I would like to add more metrics including order quantity and order frequency. I want Tableau to choose the number of clusters for me, so I will leave the number of clusters as automatic, which is the default option. As you can see now, there are three clusters which have been created based on these four identified metrics. So what do these clusters mean? In this scatter plot, you can see that cluster 1 is a cluster which we see customers buy frequently, but they do not end up spending a large amount with the company. Cluster 2 is a cluster that customers neither spend a lot nor make frequent purchases. Cluster 3 has the most valuable customers who make both frequent purchases and they spend a lot. You can also click the clusters to see the summary and the model description. The summary tab provides an overview of the variables used in the cluster model and the sum of squares. The models tab has the important statistics from the model, including the F statistic and P value. F statistic is the sum of variances. The greater the F statistic, the better the corresponding variables are in distinguishing between different clusters. The p-value is the stat sig of your results. 
Here, all the p-values are pretty small, which allow me to confidently reject the null hypothesis, which is the expected values are not different among the clusters. One more thing I want to mention is that you can actually save the results as a group by dragging the clusters to the dimension section of your data pane. You can also leverage the clusters and view the customer segments in many different ways, such as on the map. This is going to be very helpful to understand where people in each segment are located. You can utilize these segments to tell stories of your data and provide insights on how the business can utilize the segments to make valuable decisions. Okay, I hope you enjoy this video. Feel free to let me know if you have any comments or suggestions. Thanks for watching and see you next time.